meteorologists have weighed rainbows and found out they're pretty light. <laughs> We're going to talk about phase angle with traveling waves. So first of all, let's discuss uh, how do we do the points on a wave. First, I'll do it sort of regular, then I'll do it with radians, the piece that we need. So let's first of all just consider, you know, one cycle of a wave. So something maybe that goes like this. So if I drew something like this, um, what I could do, of course, I could uh, label these different values right here. So this would here be, you know, the end and the middle and so on. So this would here would be your displacement. This would be one period or one whole cycle here. In fact, if I wanted to label it, I could say just that. I could say, for example, one whole cycle is, you know, this distance right here, for example. That would be one cycle or one period. Um, of course, I could do it from like a peak to a peak or a trough to a trough, but you get the idea. But the piece that we're going to need now is we need to know that one period, we're going to do this in radians. So we're going to call, uh, we're going to say one whole way, one whole cycle, one whole period is going to be two pi radians. This is going to be the key thing that we're going to need. Because what I'm going to do now, this is the sneaky part. What I'm going to do, and if you, it depends on your math class that you take. Some of the math classes you're used to doing this, but sometimes you're not. So in case you haven't seen this in math, that's what I want to show you. So let me draw myself a nice big, uh, you know, a single cycle, for example, something like this right here. And now I'm going to start labeling it. But instead of labeling it like the whole end right here, I'm going to call this piece right here, I'm going to say that's 2 pi, because that's one whole cycle. And if that's 2 pi, then this point right here must be half of that, so that's pi. And that means that this piece over here then must be half of that. So what's half of pi? It's pi over 2. And what I can do, I can start counting by pi over 2. So this is 1 pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2, which produces. This here then must be 3 pi over 2. And of course, this would be 4 pi over 2. And then there we go. So this is the piece that I need you to know is this one right here. Okay, This is super important. Okay, so if we want to consider then the phase with traveling waves, in other words, this phase difference, well, let's discuss this. What do we mean by this? It's how far apart, uh, how far apart two points are uh, as a fraction of a whole cycle or a whole period. And don't forget, phase is going to be measured in radians. So let's just say we're given this kind of graph right here, and we can have a question like, hey, what's the phase difference between A and C, and what's the phase difference between B and C? Well, I have to first start uh, labeling it, don't I? So I'm going to label these things. So let me see. First of all, this one right here, this end right here, this will be uh, 2 pi. That's, you know, that's one whole cycle. If that's 2 pi, remember, half of that then must be pi. Half of that, again, must be pi over 2. If I needed it, this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, so this must be 3 pi over 2. I'm just labeling things like I did before. This, by the way, is 0. So if I want the phase difference now between A and C, that means I'm looking between this point and this point right here. So maybe I'll uh, label that right here. That'll be this distance right here. That'll be for part A here. Okay, so what is this difference? Well, it's from 0 to 2 pi, isn't it? So that means I could say it's you know 2 pi minus 0. That's the difference in phase. All right, well, we can do this, of course. What's 2 pi minus 0? It's just 2 pi. Now, what are the units, of course? The units are radians. So therefore, we can just say this. We can say that the phase difference is 2 pi radians. Now, another way to say it is we could say uh, that these two, uh, like these two points here and here are actually lined up. We could actually say they're in phase. Okay, so we could have also said that. We could have also said, you know, hey, these two points are in phase. All right, let's look at the next one here. So what's the phase difference between B and C? I'll do that in a different color. So now we're looking at this distance from B to C. So this one isn't quite as obvious, but if you look at it then, well, let's see. Uh, C is at 2 pi, B is at pi, so that means the phase difference would be 2 pi minus pi. Well, 2 pi minus pi is just equal to pi. So that means your phase difference then is going to be just pi radians. Or we can say that these are out of phase by pi radians. Now, instead of saying pi radians, remember, if you think about this whole fraction of a cycle, pi is half of a cycle. So I could say it's out of phase by half a cycle. So do you see there's a few different ways of explaining this? Uh, I prefer just the two pi radians and the pi radians. It's just a simple just subtraction. Okay, let's do another example. So here's a graph. And by the way, I like this. What's a sheep's favorite wavelength? Lambda. Get it? Lambda. 
Okay, if we look at this whole graph right here, well, one whole cycle is from here, for example, all the way up to here. So I'm going to start, and it repeats right here. So one cycle, and I'll label this value right here, then will be 2 pi. If that's 2 pi, what's half of that? That'll be here, that'll be pi. I split that in half again, so that gives me this is pi over 2. Then I start counting, so this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this here must be 3 pi over 2. Now I have everything I need. So the key was to just label. Just find yourself one cycle, label the end of it 2 pi, and everything else just split it. All right, what's the phase difference between A and B? So if we want A to B, that's from here to here. That's what we're looking for here. Well, what is it? It's pi, that's this one here at B, minus A, which is going to be pi over 2. Now, of course, we have to get a common denominator uh, if you're going to subtract, you know, uh, something here. So I'll make this one here over, well, right now it's kind of over 1. I want to make them both over 2. So just to remind you how we subtract fractions, we have to get a common denominator. So that means this multiplies by 2. This becomes 2 pi. And this one here just remains as pi over 2. And if I do it that way, then I get 2 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is just 1 pi over 2. So the phase difference then between A and B is just pi over 2 radians. Another way to see it is just what is this distance? You keep in mind, it's like one quarter of a cycle. This is one, two, three, this is four pieces. So one quarter of a cycle, that's pi over 2 radians. Okay, let's do the next one. What's the phase difference between A and C? So now i got to find this distance from here to here. So at C, it's 2 pi, so I'll write that down. It's 2 pi minus, and I have to do it at pi over 2. All right, well, if I'm going to do that, again, I need a common denominator. So let's say I can make them both over 2. And remember, this one right here, the second one, will just stay the same. This is like a little 1. 1 times 2 uh, gives you 2. So 2 pi times 2 gives you 4 pi. And therefore, 4 pi minus 1 pi is just 3 pi. So the answer is 3 pi divided by 2. And this is in radians. And again, another way to have looked at it would have been just to say, hey, what's this distance? Well, from here, from A to C, it's one, two, it's three of these little tick marks. And how far is a tick mark? Oh, it's pi over two. So it's three times pi over two. However it is you get there, that's fine. I know it's a little bit weird at first if you haven't seen this before, but this is really, really good practice. Okay, let's do one more example. So we have a sketch of displacement for a traveling wave. And the question is, what's the phase difference between A and B? Well, again, just like before, I just need to label all these different values here. So what is it? Maybe I'll do them in a different color. Maybe I'll do them in, let's say, yellow. So this end right here, this then must be 2 pi. Right, because that's one whole cycle. If that's one whole cycle, this piece right here then is pi. If I split that in half, this here must be pi over 2. That means each of these two tick marks is pi over 2. So this is 1 pi over 2, this is 2 pi over 2, this here must be 3 pi over 2. Let's see if that's enough. Um, if I need, oh no, actually it's not. I need to even split this up even more. So what's pi over 2 divided by 2? Oh, that's pi over 4. So this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, this is 3 pi over 4, this is 4 pi over 4, which reduces. This one end must be 5 pi over 4. And over here, then, the next one must be 6 pi over 4, but that reduces. This one here, then, must be 7 pi over 4. These are the two really important ones. Okay, It's going to be 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Those are this one and this one. That's because that's where A is and that's where B is. So if I want to do this distance you know, from A to B, that's going to be you know, this one to this one. Well, what do I do then? I'm going to say, what is that B? Well, that's 7 pi over 4. I'm going to subtract from that uh, what it is at A, which is 5 pi over 4. Well, all right, what does that give me? Well, 7 pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4. This fraction reduces what's 2 over 4. It's 1 over 2. So it's going to be pi over 2. Of course, remember the units are radians. So that, I think, it wasn't so simple. So you have to be really, really careful. Another way to look at it would have been, hey, to get from A to B, you have to do two of these tick marks. How far is two tick marks? Oh, that's pi over 2. See that? So like, you know, from here to here, this would be one, two little tick marks. That's pi over 2. That's the same distance as this one to this one. That was another way to look at it. Either way, as long as you can get the answer, it doesn't really matter how you get there.